Okay, here's my latest creation. I'm pretty happy with it. You probably don't want to hear me talk about it. You probably want to see some things. So I'm going to show you uh, how I made these nice, uh, very accurate lap joints. Uh, it's pretty simple on the router table. I'll show you a simple jig I uh, made to create uh, accurate uh, domino joints there. I'll show you how I did the top and show you how I got these uh, vertical pieces to line up uh, with the top and bottom pieces. All pretty straightforward. Uh, that's about it. The rest is uh, regular joinery. Um, not too exciting, not too different. So let me show okay, you. So the, with the light on, it gives you a little bit more idea what we're looking at here. So this is just a square piece with a 45 degree bevel uh, set up to make a perfect octagon. So the, the height of it uh, makes a perfect octagon, but it's offset from where it starts here and where it starts down here. And then the cove, which is 3 8 by 3 8 starts up here and it's equal with this part up here. And then same thing down here, they're equal uh, distance from the top. I'm going to use this setup to cut the center emblem on the table. And all this is, this is one piece, this is some 3 quarter plywood with some uh, plywood up here. The tape I leave on there, I can reuse that. Um, I didn't create this, this is a... Uh, you know somebody else's idea but that way you can put fairly small pieces on here clamp them in place uh, do your routing do whatever you need to do you don't need to put tape on them especially if they're very small there's no room for tape so you can just butt them up against here uh, double stick tape down do whatever you want in this case the bottom or the, the top is kind of long for this base so I'll just put a piece of plywood down here so I can uh, clamp it in place all the routing is going to be up here so shouldn't get in the way found to put these in is um, I like the rounded edge I, I'm gonna leave that on there um, as part of the design element and so what I'm gonna do is cut this piece a little bit long this has been sanded down to fit right in there and it's uh, a little bit proud of the surface I don't want it too proud of the surface because when I'm flushing this up to make the last two cuts I cannot move this because if the tape is out of the registration I'll have issues I could probably do it with the tape that's here but I don't want to mess with it anyway so I want to make sure it's a little long so that um, so that when I round this edge it'll it'll fit in there nice so I'm gonna cut it a little bit a little bit longer and then I'll use some sandpaper to, to get it down to exactly the right size okay so I'm gonna make sure that none of the I don't care if it's rough side up or rough side down at this point because I'm going to get rid of it. But I just want to make sure there's no, you know, big chips from the bandsaw or anything that would be below the surface. I'll probably do rough side down in this one. It looks pretty good both ways. All right, it's a little bit long. So the best way to get these rounds is actually really simple. Is to just draw it across the sandpaper both directions and that rounds it pretty good usually. For, for an eighth of an inch, usually usually two passes will do it. And that'll get it right up in there. And then I'll do the other side here. And this I've got to take a little bit of length off, so it's gonna be a few more passes. Okay, I don't know if it's good. Okay, this was done uh, in about 10 minutes, not very hard. I'm gonna let it dry for another half hour, 45 minutes to make sure it's nice and uh, firm before I flush it up with a sander. And the key is I wanna make sure that this doesn't move because uh, I want the tape to tape reference to remain the same for the next two pieces I'm gonna cut. And from thinking about that, I came up with uh, sort of a best practice um, in, in the tape setup using it, using sort of a fixture like this. And that is this, if I did not require tape on this piece to do the grid, um, this piece could slide, potentially, let's say my tape comes undone, this piece could slide and the shaper won't know it and my piece will be messed up. Having tape here, number one, gives the shaper the opportunity to sense that uh, the tape has shifted and it'll warn you and it'll stop the, all the cutting. Having tape on this piece right here further lets me remove this, not the tape, but remove this piece 
maybe put another piece up here, put new tape in and add that to the scan. So now I've got this as a reference, I add to the scan, I've got more tape and that'll allow me to continue just as accurately. If there's no tape on the piece here, I could never reset it to line up with this. And so the, the best practice is, if you can, always have uh, tape, a couple pieces of tape on your main piece in a setup like this. It'll keep you from any issues if uh, the piece moves. Okay, I went back into the design, and the change I had to make was that these arcs on the original design were just lines. And so you can't do an outside of a line. So I went back into the, into the basic design, uh, separated these two pieces, uh, did an object, uh, excuse me, path to nodes, um, which essentially takes the nodes that make it into a line, and when the line is an eighth of an inch wide, it puts uh, nodes along the corners, uh, or at least in a couple places on the line. That allowed it to turn into an eighth inch actual shaped space or whatever, and then I made an outside cut, and I put a five thousandths tolerance, uh, so it'll be a five thousandth on either side, smaller than the one eighth inch hole that was cut for it. Now I'm gonna go slice these off at the bandsaw, and we'll see how we did. Okay, so uh, these were in here. I went to the bandsaw and cut it. They popped out. And let's see how they're gonna look here. Okay, the fit looks really good. Um, obviously, I have to, I have to um, do length. Okay, so what happened with length here was it's too short. Um, you can see if it's actually perfect in there. Um, you can see that the basically the radius of the bit <laughs> extended on either side and the image of the line uh, stopped here so it did not take that into account so I need to go back to the drawing and fix that but other, other than that it fits really well and it looks good the 5,000 tolerance is just nice and uh, just have to make that line longer Okay, here's what I've actually decided to do is I cut, I rounded a piece of the other material I had um, and then cut off a little section to fit in here and then I'll cut this piece to fit in there and here's why I did that. If I go back to this drawing, I have to extend this um, a sixteenth of an inch in either direction it's an arc, so it was formed using an arc tool, um, but it becomes kind of a pain in the butt to make sure it's exactly the right length. I guess I could make it uh, longer and then cut it, uh, but this just seems easier, and to be honest, I don't think anybody's gonna notice. You're, you're gonna see a little line between these two, but I think when everything's done and sanded and finished, I'm not sure it's gonna be that much of a difference. We will see. Okay, it went in there and uh, it looks pretty good. You can see the line there. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. I'll consider that, uh, you know, next time I do something like this. I'll do the same thing with this other arc and uh, then it'll be good. This was a little thicker, so at first I flushed it up with a hand, uh, with a block plane. And I wasn't too worried about it because the grain's going this way and I was pushing it in. I didn't, didn't want to push this way and potentially shift the, uh, shift the tabletop. So um, the next one will be fine because it'll be the last one and we'll be done. Okay, here's a close of what this looks like before it gets all smoothed up. Looks pretty ratty, but uh, we'll uh, level this all out uh, with a hand plane and then a sander. And uh, this only took about maybe 15, 20 minutes to go around the perimeter. It's not real hard. That little jig, um, 
This little thing helped out quite a bit. I just used a little brass, uh, what do you call this? Like a sizing bar, measuring tool. Just an eighth of an inch just to hold it down. Uh, and uh, the flush trim saw could go right up against it. That worked out real well. One side is uh, 22 and a half, and the other side was 45, so it worked out good. And um, this will look uh, good just like the, the center, and um, good to go. Start getting final details done on the top. This is by far the most accurate way I've ever seen to make a lap joint. You start by marking your shoulder with a knife and cutting that at the table saw just shy of half the width. Then remove the bulk of the material at the bandsaw and then use this pattern bit with a bearing on it to rub up against that shoulder and remove just a tiny bit of material and you just keep uh, moving it up increment by increment uh, until it's perfect. You can see there I'm a little bit off and so I'm just raising the bit and makes them nice. It's really easy. Okay, so I just got done, uh, this one's glued up, and I, I uh, glued up two sides on the frame that's going to have a panel in it. And I used this piece to hold it in place so it would be square. So I just took it off and realized that I can't get the panel in there. I was thinking along the lines of a frame and panel door where you can slide it in where the mortises go. Um, or the, or the grooves go all the way to the end. So it's already glued up, so I can't rerun it over the router. Um, so I think what I can do is set up the router bit vertically this way and run that against the fence and get rid of that. And then put a plug in when it's glued up.
When I made the cove cuts, I used a stop lock on the fence to ensure that all of them had the same starting point. And I also made this in a couple passes so that the bit would not burn and it would get a better finish. When I put the bevel on the legs, they were longer than the fence was, so I used an extension that you can see there. It's attached to the other side of the fence and has a T on it, and that allows the start of the bevel to be consistent on all the legs.